Where are all the Jews? Show where we tell you where Jews are. So, if you've been paying attention to the news lately, you might have heard that there are Jews. Not many, but some. Being an ancient Semitic people whose history is largely defined by near-constant persecution at the hands of larger groups, Jewish people have had to move around. This happened over the course of thousands of years as different Jewish populations settled in areas that were less openly hostile to them, scattering the Jewish population into tiny communities across the globe. Despite this devastating diaspora leading these populations to be isolated from each other for thousands of years, many of these communities maintained their Judaism, leading to interesting cases like the one I'll talk about today, the Kaifeng Jews. Uh, actually, it's like a part of our family, but actually we don't have relatives. But still, we were studying together in Kaifeng, and we came four years ago, and nowadays they are coming, so it's welcome back home. <laughs> Jews first came to China with the Silk Road around the 2nd century BC. A group of Jewish merchants called the Rodenites were apparently very successful, but we're looking for settlement. Settlement could have taken place as early as 25 CE, but evidence is lacking. Settlement in Kaifeng probably started during the Northern Song Dynasty, 960 to 1127, or in the earlier Tang Dynasty, which lasted from 618 to 907. They could have come during the Tang Dynasty only to be exiled during the great anti-Buddhist persecution and then come back afterward, or none of the above. Basically, history is fake. Nobody knows shit. Moving on. Kaifeng was, and remains to be, a coastal, some might say, cosmopolitan trading hub, allowing for the settlement of shall we say, globalist elites. These cultural Marxists managed to establish themselves and built the first synagogue in Kaifeng in 1163. This synagogue was destroyed in 1461 by a flood, but it was rebuilt by the bustling Jewish community, which is estimated as high as 20,000 members around this time. China was actually a pretty decent place to be Jewish for a thousand plus years, until quite recently. During the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, Jewish people were given eight surnames by the emperor. To cut the cringe, American tries to speak chinese to a minimum, I will not say them. There are three steelies, steels, stillas, rocks with words on them. Preserving the history and practices of these Jews. There were four, but one was lost. The earliest, from 1489, describes broader Jewish history and the founding of the Kaifeng community and synagogue. The second, from 1512, says that the Jews came to China from India, which Wikipedia says is scholarly dubious, but there are many Indian Jews, and B'nai Menashe apparently went from China to India, so... I don't know about that. The most recent one, the most recent Steely, from 1663, describes the destruction of the temple in Another Flood and commemorates its rebuilding in 1653. The third, Steely, documents the actions of one high-profile Kaifeng Jew, Zhao Yingchen. Uh, it's going to be cringe. Just bear with me. The flood that destroyed the temple was intentionally caused in 1642 to stop rebel Li Zichang. But it didn't work. Zhao, who passed his bureaucrat test four years after the destruction, used his standing to restore the community. Zhao and his brother, who was also a Mandarin, both wrote accounts of what happened. But they have both been lost. Zhao, according to Wikipedia, was an excellent Confucian scholar and administrator who exterminated bandits and opened schools. Lit. Marco Polo said that he met Jews when he was in China, and that Kublai Khan celebrated certain Jewish and Muslim holidays. 
but Kublai was pretty shit to Jews and Muslims, and Marco was pretty shit at telling the truth, so I'd say the validity is debatable. Much of what we know of these Jews, and all Jewish groups, and all minor religious groups in general, comes from the Christians who tried to convert them. Matteo Ricci pulled up in 1605 with the Jesuit gang, where he met a man named Ai Tien, a Jewish guy going to take his civil service test. After investigating and interacting with the community, Ricci was allegedly offered to take over after the current rabbi died, as long as Ricci renounced the divinity of Christ. Considering that this had been kind of a deal-breaker for them since the Council of Nicaea, along with the prohibition of Astartes Librarius and the dickish public rebuke of Magnus the Red. Ricci did not accept. Since then, the community declined, with Hebrew spoken less and less and the last rabbi dying in 1810 with no successor. Many converted to Islam, which makes sense, it happens all the time, but some lost the plot entirely and converted to Christianity. Weird. In 1866, the temple was destroyed for the last time due to a flood, again, but also poverty. The vultures, i.e. the British, swooped in to snatch up artifacts, which they did, and they still have them. It hasn't been easy for the remaining Jews to practice under the Communist Party's anti-religious policies either. A 2010 census found that in all of China, only 2,800 people identified as Jewish, with about a third of those living in Kaifeng. This represented about 0.0002% of the population at the time, which was unfortunately not significant enough to qualify as one of China's 56 ethnic groups or five licensed religions. Although, I don't know if that would have necessarily helped didn't really help Islam or the Uyghurs. Most Jewish culture and self-perception has been lost. However, some oldsters remain who remember their unique Sino-Judaic practices and have Jew listed on their old identification papers. But there aren't many of them, and they won't be here for long. With the community's rediscovery by broader Jewry, it looked like a revival was bubbling up, with a Jewish museum opened and plans to re-re-rebuild the synagogue, and about 20 Jews made Aliyah, which is moving to Israel. But in 2014, with the implementation of Xi Jinping thought in religious spaces, all religious groups' practices have been forced to acknowledge that Xi Jinping is a thought and also basically worship him and his ideology instead. Essentially, everybody's super crypto again, the last remnants of the synagogue have been built over, the community center was closed, the museum was closed, and all hope of a new temple has evaporated. The crackdown continues. On February 1st, 2020, the CCP also implemented 41 new rules called Control Measures for Religious Groups. This gives them new measures to control religious groups. Which means they replace pictures and scriptures with pictures of Winnie the Pooh. While this religious suppression could potentially become physically dangerous for Kaifeng's ancient Jewish population, as they are socially ostracized and have their loyalties questioned by a regime that has shown it will totally kill you and sell your organs no problem, even worse... It's a bummer for me. But here's a great quote from a 2016 New York Times article. One Friday evening, two couples invited me to join their Shabbat service, for which they had been studying a Torah portion. You don't recognize me as a Jew, the host said, but I recognize myself as a Jew, and that's what's most important. Judaism, the host said is all about endurance. Now, if that doesn't make you Baruch Hashem, I don't know what will. But some Jews are unconvinced. So, is it foo? they ask. And you respond to the evil child, 
Did you not hear that quote? That's dead ass the most Jewish thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. I hate that you always have to ask if it's foo. It's not a lot of us. If people really want to cap that hard, let them have it. Plus, there's poorly sourced DNA evidence from the 80s, so slurp my schmeat, you hypothetical Ashkenazi.